The name Plymouth is what the English colonists called this, their adopted home. But this area had another name prior to the Pilgrim's Landing. The Wampanoag tribe living here called it Patuxet. Today, the nearly 75-year-old Plymouth Plantation has adopted a new name to honor these two important histories, Plymouth Patuxet. Near the quiet shoreline of Plymouth, Massachusetts, a familiar scene. A popular tourist attraction, Plymouth Plantation is also an archaeological site and education center. This outdoor exhibit recreates the homestead of Habamock, a 17th century Wampanoag leader and envoy for the English and area tribes. These boats look pretty heavy, huh guys? Most they of the home site staffers are Wampanoag, including former educator and site supervisor Philip Wynn. We have different homes that represent what you know a normal Wampanoag person would live in in the summertime and in the wintertime on the seasonality of living with the land around here too. We would hunt daily. so that Cooking all demos take place throughout the day. All throughout the day something would be cooking on the fire. For example, deer meat stew with onions, garlic, corn, beans, squash and cranberries. Soup was something that was common. Um, you just keep it replenishing all throughout the day and be like a crock pot. The longer it cooked, the better it tastes. It's a cultural connection that you can't read about. To feel it, to smell it, to know and to look at what the materials were. We still remember our heritage, we share it and make connections that way. Wampanoags are known for their beautiful craftsmanship, including labor-intensive wampum, or beads made from quahog shells, this is our reproduction wampum belt. It's made with ceramic beads. This is a man and this is a woman. They're basically joined hands and parading across the belt. Also prominent at this Living History Museum is the Mayflower II. Last August, she returned home after a three-year, multi-million dollar restoration. It was a magnificent sight as she sailed into Plymouth Harbor, just in time for the epic 400th anniversary of the original ship's landing in 1620. We dove into our archives for a view of what that 17th century voyage was like. Step on this ship and you can't help but wonder what it was like for the 102 people who spent two months on that voyage. Our guide, former captain Peter Aronstam. So welcome aboard Mayflower 2. Thank you. Uh, we've had, we have probably 200,000 visitors a year, maybe more, every year come aboard Mayflower. Almost everyone's first comment is what a small ship <laughs> to have come across the ocean yeah, in 1620. Yeah, it, it feels really small. <laughs> it is. Uh, not where for we, the day. No, for the, at that time it was a mid-sized merchant ship, uh, but for modern times, of course, you think of the cruise liners today, this is, would be tiny. First thing I notice, there's no helm on the half deck. That's because all the steering is down below. They call this the whipstaff, and this was the, the system for steering in the early 17th century. Um, it's essentially a lever that runs through the deck to the tiller down below. So the helmsman would stand here, and an officer of the watch or the master would give a command to the helmsman, so the ship would move um, based on which way this whipstaff is, is being manipulated. Just like Plymouth Plantation, Mayflower II is a living history museum with people playing characters from 1620, like Dorothy, the servant of Governor John Carver. It's been very difficult, sir. I will not tell you no different. Very difficult. Yeah. And how was the, the passage across? It was terrible. For anybody what was kept below decks, which was generally all of us, we were transported very much as goods or chattel for there ain't really ships that are meant to carry people comfortably. It was dark and it was wet and seasickness pretty rampant amongst everyone. The great cabin, the captain's quarters, is quite spacious in comparison, although the bunks appear deceptively small. Those are actually over six feet long bunks and they're very narrow because at sea you don't want a big wide bed that you'd roll around in and fall out of. So it's, it looks small, but it's uh, really not so small. And joining me now is Whit Perry, Plymouth Patuxet's Director of Maritime Preservation and Operations and captain of the ship when she is underway. First of all, what's that experience like? It's amazing. The physical things we can learn by sailing a 17th century square rig ship. Of course, Mayflower 2 has just come off its uh, restoration at Mystic Seaport. 
So we had a incredibly good sale from Mystic Seaport back here to Plymouth back in August and doing the sea trials and really putting her through her paces and sailing in uh, all types of weather, including a tropical storm we had to outrun to go to New Bedford. And the ship just sails incredibly well. And, and it's an honor for me to be able to do that with 26 other people in my crew. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that restoration project, how extensive that was, and what were the big things that got done to the ship? Well, the ship's 64 years old now, having been built in 1957 in England and given to America as a gift of appreciation for our help and cooperation during World War II. A 64-year-old wooden ship, no matter how we do our regular and routine maintenance, it was just time for a major refit. So we started right with the frames, the planking, all the rigging, new sails. Just within the last couple of weeks, Mayflower has now been deemed a national historic place. Are you happy with how it came out and is it open now for visitors? I couldn't be more pleased with the results. The collaboration with Mystic Seaport Museum was fantastic. My crew got to work right alongside the shipwrights and riggers down at Mystic Seaport for three years. And we are open. It's a real sight to see whether you've seen it in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, or now fully restored. You're really going to appreciate what we've been able to accomplish. Well, you did a great job overseeing all this and, and sailing her back. It's good to have her back here in, uh, in Plymouth. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Thank you very much, Wit, and we will be right back.